If I told you a virulent global plague affected millions, you wouldn't be blamed for jumping to the current crisis. But I'm actually thinking of the milestone plague that once blighted World of Warcraft. Significant not only for its scale and magnitude, the corrupted blood incident gave us an invaluable model for real-world epidemics. And I'm not the only one who thinks that. Epidemiologists like Dr. Eric Lofgren are using its data for insight into the current spread of COVID-19. But to understand why this is possible, we have to go back. On September 13th, 2005, World of Warcraft released its first 20-player raid dungeon. It pitted high-level players against hordes of jungle trolls before facing them against the ancient blood god himself, Hakar the Soul Flayer. It was a uniquely challenging boss, as right before death he could cast Corrupted Blood, a devastating spell dealing both massive instant and trickle damage to any unit within 100 yards. Players could also get reinfected from currently debuffed allies, and for players too close to each other, or Hakar's corpse, it could lead to a devastating chain reaction. A reinfectious disease transmitted through close contact? It may seem like a stretch now, but once you understand how both spread, the parallels become a lot more clear. A coding oversight meant that if a player's pet was infected, but dismissed within 5 seconds, the timer on the debuff would pause, and the next time it was called, it would still have corrupted blood. Patient Zero remains unknown to this day, but at some point, an Archmon server player resummoned their infected pet in one of Azeroth's capital cities. The damage was so great that many low-level players were killed instantly, and many high-level players died as the debuff ping-ponged between them. The debuff spread to surrounding NPCs, who spread the disease without succumbing themselves, trapping nearby players in an infinite death loop. While the coronavirus affliction is a tad less dramatic in its presentation, it spreads pretty much the same way. Socially. As Dr. Lofgren put it, For me, it was a good illustration of how important it is to understand people's behaviors. We often view epidemics as these things that sort of happen to people. There's a virus and it's doing things. But really, it's a virus that's spreading between people, and how people interact and behave and comply with authority figures, or don't, these are all very important things. You can't really predict, oh yeah, everyone will quarantine, it will be fine. No, they won't. He may have originally wrote his paper back in 2007, but its observations almost exactly mirror the current crisis. And if we're going to get through this, it's important to understand why. If you think of NPCs as asymptomatic carriers, it becomes easy to see how coronavirus infected hundreds of thousands so quickly. Before knowledge of the virus was widespread, asymptomatic carriers freely interacted with the general public. Reinfection from NPCs mirrors COVID-19's biphasic nature, while player characters represent the roughly 20% who react critically to the virus. Lower-level players also serve as a good statistical representation of the elderly, who have been shown to go critical and die within a matter of hours, while higher-level players serve as a stand-in for the remaining population. Like many people who dismissed the virus as a bad flu, many WoW players initially believed Corrupted Blood to be a worldwide event. It wasn't until its uncontrolled spread to other servers, not unlike the spread to other Chinese regions and later other countries, that the greater populations began to take notice. Using server jumping to represent modern air travel and rapid transport, Corrupted Blood is possibly the best model we have for infection in the modern world, but on a social level, it also gives invaluable insight. Misinformation in chat rooms spread at a pace rivaling Twitter, with little or no moderation to stem the flow of potentially dangerous advice. Both the respective governing figures and Blizzard were confused and sluggish in their response, and by the time they released official statements telling people to voluntarily quarantine themselves, those in infected areas had already begun to do just that. Much like the high-level healers who rushed in to heal infected players in shifts, many medical workers began working non-stop trying to treat those in dense population centers. And, not unlike high-level players who braved cities, some private citizens took it upon themselves to help however they could. Unfortunately, the more sinister actions of WoW players are also mirrored in the current crisis. Some people broke quarantine, others used the opportunity to engage in social taboos, and, through ignorance or malice, some people actively infected others. In WoW, a sect of griefers formed whose sole purpose was to constantly reinfect major populations and keep the plague alive. While not as intentional, it provides a replica model to show the impact people's initial underestimation of the virus had on its spread. Now they really have a growing concern about the common flu. We have heard a lot about the coronavirus, but ask any emergency room doctor, and he or she will tell you that it's the common flu that's concerning them. Are you worried about getting the flu? I am very much worried because he's just gotten over it. For many, the coronavirus seems like a lot less of a threat than the common flu. As said by Dr. Lufkin, 
Most people thought, oh, this isn't a big deal. I'm not going to change my behavior. I'm going to the concert and then going to see my elderly grandma anyway. Epidemics are a social problem. Minimizing the seriousness of something is sort of real-world griefing. The damage caused by infected individuals who use public transport and cabs cannot be understated, as we can now see with the exponential spike in real-world cases. And even with the current closure of shops and restaurants, many people still insist on social gatherings. Interestingly, the vigilante player response from WoW has also manifested in the real world. To combat the spread, some WoW players formed hit squads, targeting anyone with a debuff, while in the real world, actions, justified or not, were and are being taken against those from Wuhan, and later any foreign traveler. Instead of corpses, we have drones, but the streets of major cities are empty nonetheless. Life is being put on hold for coronavirus. But what Blizzard fixed within a month by resetting the world, we'll be lucky to vaccinate four in a year at best, although most reasonable timelines put it around two. However, this isn't where the similarities end, because if WoW taught us one thing, it's that we can save ourselves if we come together. Major corporations offering paid leave. Tens of thousands of nurses coming out of retirement. Factories voluntarily shifting production to medical supplies. And private citizens trying to do their part. This is why it's important to educate ourselves on the spread. The more knowledge we have, the more we can do to help. And the better we can fight this. Stay home, stay safe, and if you do go out, wear a mask and gloves. Practice social distancing. This is only one in a long line of plagues. But if we learn from our mistakes, work together, and persevere, we can stop it. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. I really appreciate it. I'd love to hear what you guys thought in the comments below. Like and subscribe if you want to see more of my content. And stay safe out there. I'll catch you guys next time.